Today I'm going to switch things up and give you the conclusion to this video in the opener. And the ultimate conclusion is no. The question to that answer is coming up, so let's do this. When I'm doing tedious work like hours of benchmarking, I like to catch up on my reading list, and I'm able to do that with Audible Plus. Audible Plus offers access to thousands of best selling audiobooks, Audible Originals, and even podcasts. As an Audible Premium Plus member, this month I selected Star Wars Thrawn Ascendancy by Timothy Zahn as one of my two monthly free bonus titles to keep. For more information about Audible Plus or to get your free trial, click the link in the description below. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and last week Microsoft officially launched the insider preview of Windows 11 on the developer channel. I did a tutorial on how to install that preview. However, the question today is, should you? Or more specifically, will Windows 11 give you a performance boost in the areas of productivity, content creation, or gaming? If you didn't skip the opener, then you already know the answer to that question. And if you think this is a trustworthy face, and you don't care about the data from the 40 plus benchmarks I ran to get that answer, then thanks for watching and continue enjoying your Windows 10 experience. I guess if you're still watching, you don't think I look trustworthy. Okay. I guess I'll explain how I came to my conclusion and show you lots of benchmark charts, but first, I should go over my test bench and testing procedures. First, the test bench is a Ryzen 7 3700X and an EVGA RTX 2080 Ti Black Edition, 32 gigabytes of 3600 MHz CL16 G-Skill Trident Z memory on an Asus Prime X570 Pro motherboard. I'm using a Scythe Mugen 5 black cooler for the CPU and a brand new one terabyte Sabret Rocket Gen 4 NVMe SSD, which leads me into my testing procedures. I started by doing a clean install of the latest version of Windows 10. I didn't test a mature bloated Windows 10 install against a clean Windows 11 install. I then installed all my drivers and benchmark software. My game library is preloaded on a two terabyte SanDisk SSD. For game benchmarks, I use the latest NVIDIA game ready driver version 471.11, then I uninstalled that and installed the latest NVIDIA Studio driver, which turns out also to be version 471.11. After I completed all the benchmarking in Windows 10, I activated my developer channel in Windows settings and installed Windows 11 Insider Preview Build 22000 through Windows Updates, just like I did in my tutorial video. Then I ran all the same exact benchmarks using the same exact settings as I did on Windows 10. I also need to mention that all the UEFI settings were exactly the same for both Windows versions, meaning I had TMP and Secure Boot enabled for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. And I manually deactivated the motherboard performance enhancements, which included CPU performance mode and precision boost overdrive. So the CPU was running completely at stock. So it should be limited to its max 4.4 gigahertz boost clock and can only exceed its 65 watt package power limit for very brief periods. So while yes, the 3700X is fully capable of exceeding those stock settings, I only want Windows, not the motherboard, determining the CPU performance. The only enhancement was enabling the memory's 3600 MHz XMP profile. I also left the GPU completely at stock settings. Finally, all benchmarks were run three times and recorded scores are the average of the three runs. If any of those three benchmarks runs is outside the margin of error, that score is thrown out and another benchmark is run. Okay, last thing before I inundate you with the charts, I want to stress this is the very first developer release of Windows 11, so along with not having features like the Android app implementation or Teams integration, Direct Storage API is also not a thing yet. I also didn't test Auto HDR. I planned on doing that to see if there was a performance hit with it, but 
I'm going to wait until Windows 11 is more mature, so I can test it in conjunction with direct storage. Okay, on to the benchmarks, and I'll just let these run, and I'll discuss a little afterwards. Feel free to hit the pause button if the charts go by too fast. Those results were pretty much exactly the same as the comparison I did of the leaked version of Windows 11, just a much broader selection of benchmarks. I basically ran every benchmark I have, and again, the two operating systems were virtually tied. In fact, with the exception of Fortnite and CSGO, all the gaming benchmarks between the two were within the margin of error, which is 5 FPS in my testing. And once you get to the 400 plus FPS range, a 4 to 6% difference isn't really noticeable to the average gamer. What was noticeable was the 1% lows in GTA 5. That 4.4 FPS wasn't a typo and was repeatable. I ran that benchmark like six times and it was a stuttery mess every time on Windows 11. The productivity and content creation benchmarks were also mathematically an even tie because all were also within the margin of error of 4.49%. That's the cutoff I use to toss a benchmark result. If you've ever run, say, Cinebench, you know that you can get swings of one or 200 points from run to run on the same system. So if any run is plus or minus 4.49% of the other runs, that one gets tossed. So needless to say, I run several of these benchmarks a lot more than three times. So again, mathematically speaking, because all of these scores are within the margin of error, they're all the same. So back to the question, and I think it's answered, will you get more performance in Windows 11? Well, not yet you won't. Who knows as it matures, but this leads me to the second question. Since the performance is the same, should you upgrade? And my answer to that is also no. Not unless you're actually a developer and need to tweak your applications within the Windows 11 operating system. If you're just an average gamer, content creator, or PC user, then no. You see, to get the same level of performance, you have to deactivate the diagnostic data sharing option that you had to enable to upgrade to the Windows 11 preview build. Those background processes use quite a bit of system resources. I didn't make any graphs, but here's a chart of the same gaming benchmarks with the Windows 11 optional diagnostic data setting on. And you can see they're no longer tied with Windows 11 taking up to a 21% performance hit in average FPS. The productivity and content creation benchmark showed the same performance hit. So if you do upgrade to the insider preview build and disable the diagnostics, then you're no longer providing feedback to improve the operating system for future users. And if you don't care about that and just want the shiny new thing, well, Okay, 
I got that off my chest, let's finish this off with some other testing I did. I selected a few of the benchmarks, F1 2020, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Cinebench, and Geekbench, and I tested them under different parameters. On the Ryzen test bench, I ran them with the motherboard enhancements enabled, and again with a manual overclock on the CPU and GPU, I then installed the Win 11 boot drive in an Intel system. It was an i5-11400 with a GTX 1660 with 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory. And again, I didn't even make any charts for this. The numbers, of course, were you know, different, but still all results were within the margin of error. In fact, for the Intel system, they were within less than 1%. So now you have the question to the answer and my ultimate recommendation, if you don't need Windows 11 for developing on Windows or if you don't really have the desire or technical knowledge to be a beta tester, then stick with Windows 10 until Windows 11 is ready for prime time somewhere in the near future. You're not missing anything. But that's it for this one. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below. Be sure to click that like before you go and maybe consider subscribing. I am daily driving Windows 11 on my laptop and I'll continue to test it as it matures when direct storage is actually a thing with games that will support it. I'll follow up with another video, but until then, I'll just post in my community tab and on Twitter if I find something new in the OS. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.